Hello students. Today I uh, will talk about magnetic field due to current carrying solenoid. So uh, we will first understand what is solenoid and uh, then uh, we will try to derive magnetic field at some point on its axis of uh, on the axis of solenoid using Biosauer's law. So uh, before we go to that uh, let us first have a quick look at uh, magnetic field of ring and uh, nature of magnetic field of straight wire. So uh, earlier we saw that when you have straight wire carrying current I suppose uh, current is I then what is the nature of magnetic field around the wire? The magnetic field lines are circular like this okay and uh, what if the current is uh, going in opposite direction in that case the nature of magnetic field lines will be like this so magnetic field direction will change and how do we know that how do we know uh, in which case you have uh, which nature of magnetic field so for that you can use your right hand thumb rule you can place your uh, thumb uh, right hand thumb in the direction of current and then see how the fingers curl around the wire so in this case the curling will be like this okay whereas uh, in the second case if thumb is along the current then you will see that the fingers right hand fingers would be curling around the wire in this fashion so this is how we can determine direction of uh, magnetic field for straight wire now coming to the ring uh, when you have current carrying ring suppose uh, current is going like this now how do i know uh, what is the direction of uh, uh, magnetic field in this case So here again you have to use right hand thumb rule but uh, now uh, curl your right hand fingers in the direction of current okay and then uh, look at the direction of thumb and you will see that thumb is going like this. So when current is on circular path thumb indicates uh, direction of B and when current is straight fingers indicate curling. Uh, direction of magnetic field so uh, if I have current going like this in that case the magnetic field direction if you use right hand thumb rule you will realize that magnetic field is like this so uh, this is just for information that in case if we have to determine uh, direction of magnetic field in case of solenoid sorry ring or straight wire uh, this is how we can use uh, right and thumb rule and now let us come to today's topic solenoid so first of all uh, uh, what is solenoid what do you mean by solenoid so solenoid is nothing but helical winding of uh, conducting wire so if you can have wires wound on some cylindrical body like this this is solenoid so uh, you can say that in solenoid you have so many rings carrying current okay and uh, hence uh, we can we can say that we can say that um, uh, it is collection of so many rings so uh, how do we determine uh, magnetic field due to current carrying ring so we know that if uh, this is how we have current passing through the uh, ring then at uh, some point p which is at say distance x the magnetic field we can uh, write magnetic field as mu 0 i by 2 r square upon r square plus x square raised to 3 by 2 what is r here r is the radius r is the radius of the ring and uh, what if i have so many turns suppose i have so many turns uh, say n turns and uh, then if i am asked to determine magnetic field at uh, some point p again say at uh, distance x uh, how do we find out magnetic field then the formula is b is equal to mu 0 i by 2 n r square 
r square plus x square is to 3 by 2. Okay, so uh, this is how we can use uh, this formula when we have more than one or two turns of current carrying ring. Now, in case of solenoid, the problem is slightly different. Uh, let us have a look at the problem when we are uh, uh, talking about solenoid. In case of solenoid, uh, when we consider some point on its axis, uh, the distance of the turns is not fixed. So, if I have a solenoid of say uh, L length and N turns, suppose if I consider uh, this red wires as uh, turns of the solenoid and uh, say there are N turns. So here is solenoid and uh, now I have its axis and uh, say uh, here this is the point P where I want to find out magnetic field. Okay, what is the problem now? The problem is when you consider uh, this particular turn, you have some distance x. Suppose if you consider this turn of the solenoid, then the distance x from point P is different. Suppose if you consider this term, then the distance x is different. So if I have to use this formula, B is equal to mu 0 i by 2 r square upon r square plus x square is to 3 by 2. The problem is that the x value is changing because the distance of this point, distance of point P is changing from different turns of solenoid and uh, then we cannot use this formula directly. Uh, so there must be some other way uh, around it because uh, ultimately solenoid is collection of so many rings so we should be able to use this formula but uh, apparently this one quantity x which is the distance of point p from center of the ring is changing for different rings and uh, so uh, we have to find out some solution to this problem. So what to do? So to solve that problem, uh, we consider small part of solenoid. Uh, it's better that rather than considering uh, whole solenoid in one go, we consider small part. So I will take a thin slice, you may say, of solenoid. Uh, suppose uh, I have n turns in L length of solenoid and uh, let the radius be R. Okay, and uh, I will consider that uh, there is a point P, it's in, uh, here somewhere, and then out of all turns, I will consider only a few. Where I am considering, I am considering. A thin slice of solenoid or say thin uh, small part of solenoid say length dx at distance x from point p what is the advantage advantage is for all these turns for all these turns i can consider that p is at same distance x because they are very closely packed okay moreover the dx this dx is very small compared to x and uh, what is the advantage advantage is i can find out magnetic field at point p due to all these turns in one formula so uh, which i can write as db is equal to mu 0 i by 2 n prime r square by r square plus x square raised to 3 by 2 what is n prime? n prime is number of turns in length dx. Okay, and how do I know how many turns I have uh, in this uh, small thickness uh, dx? So we know that uh, total number of turns n are in length l then dx will have how many turns 
so i can say that n prime is n by l into dx but n by l is uh, described as small n number of turns per unit length is symbolized by small n so n dx okay and then my formula becomes db is equal to mu 0 i by 2 n r square upon r square plus x square raised to 3 by 2 with dx and now if i have to uh, find total magnetic field what i will do is integrate db okay so uh, mu 0 n i n being constant you can always take outside number of turns per unit length for given solenoid is constant so we can take it out and uh, then integration of uh, r square upon r square plus x square is to 3 by 2 by dx now again uh, it is not that uh, we cannot integrate this but uh, it's better if we take help of trigo so uh, again uh, let us go back to the condition and uh, we will consider this angle as theta so automatically this angle will be angle here is theta okay and uh, let the angle subtended at one point one end of the solenoid be theta 1 and uh, let the angle at the other end be theta 2. So uh, if I consider uh, a triangle say let me call it let this point be O let this point be P and uh, let us consider this point with Q. So if I consider triangle O P Q then uh, this is the theta angle this is radius of the solenoid look at it this is radius of solenoid R okay and uh, how much is uh, this part this is X so again if i take formula of 10 10 theta what is 10 theta 10 theta is x by r so here again uh, if we take if we take 10 theta 10 theta is x by r so x is equal to r 10 theta and uh, what is dx dx is r 6 square theta d theta uh, earlier uh, during the derivation of straight wire magnetic field due to straight wire we had similar equation so now i'll be substituting this x and dx value in our formula of b and then let us see what we get so now uh, b can be expressed as mu 0 n i by 2 integration r square upon r square instead of x square what we have now now we have r 10 theta so r square 10 square theta is to 3 by 2 and uh, instead of dx what we have now r 6 square theta d theta so simplifying this we get mu 0 n i by 2 and uh, numerator is now r square sorry r cube sec square theta and in denominator if i take r square outside it will have power of 3 by 2 and in square bracket we have 1 plus 10 square theta is to 3 by 2 with d theta so what is 10 1 plus 10 square theta it is 6 square theta okay and so if you have 1 plus 10 square theta raised to 3 by 2 it will give you sec cube theta so now we have b is equal to 
mu0 n i by 2 integration r cube sec square theta upon r cube r square r square raised to 3 by 2 will give me r cube and uh, the bracket is now sec cube theta uh, as explained here so now what i am left with mu 0 n i by 2 r cube and r cube gets cancelled out uh, sec square theta by sec cube theta is 1 upon sec and 1 upon sec is nothing but cos so I have cos theta d theta okay because 1 upon sec theta is cos theta and what should be the limit of integration just like previous case minus theta 1 to plus theta 2 what is theta 1 what is theta 2 so theta 1 is the angle subtended by one end of solenoid theta 2 is angle subtended by other end of solenoid and as one is anti-clockwise other one is clockwise theta 1 is negative theta 2 is positive we had discussed this earlier so what is the integration of cos theta it is sine theta so mu 0 n i by 2 sine theta with minus theta 1 to plus theta 2 limit and if you substitute the limits you will have mu 0 n i by 2 upper limit sine theta 2 minus lower limit sine of minus theta 1 math students should be knowing now that in case of sine we can write this as mu 0 n i by 2 sine theta 1 plus sine theta 2 so this is the expression for magnetic field of solenoid okay so let us have a look at the answer so initially we explain our consideration that uh, we are considering solenoid of uh, length l and number of turns n and uh, then we have number of turns per unit length small n a very important quantity don't forget this and then we mention the parameters of solenoid it is uh, having radius r and it is carrying current i uh, then you have to mention which point you are talking about so there is point o somewhere on the axis of solenoid see here is point o okay and uh, then we consider small part of solenoid how much small say length dx where at x distance from o point and uh, then what is n prime number of turns in this length dx how many turns you have so we say it is n dx uh, equation 4.8.1 and uh, then we use the formula for rings that if you have n number of turns you can find out magnetic field with this formula what is n prime here n prime is the number of turns in the small length dx and how do we find it as per this equation 4.8.1 so uh, we have used it then we have a little bit of trigo uh, just like straight wire if you have any confusion you should go back to derivation of straight wire and uh, watch the video again simplify substitute and uh, this is where we reach cos theta with uh, uh, here uh, this is db db is the magnetic field at point o due to small part of solenoid and to get total uh, magnetic field we integrate db and uh, ultimately we end up with this formula which is the formula for magnetic field of solenoid at given point on uh, its axis so what it depends on magnetic field is directly depend on number of turns per unit length and current passing through it so if you double the number of turns per unit length magnetic field will be doubled if you double current passing through it magnetic field will be doubled but it has nothing to do see very interesting parameter b has nothing to do with length of the solenoid okay so keep that in mind uh, so with this formula in hand we can now discuss special cases what are the special cases so here are the special cases 
first one is uh, at one end of the solenoid at midpoint of solenoid then uh, infinite solenoid and semi infinite solenoid so let us deal with each one one by one so uh, first we'll consider a solenoid and uh, now see when you have uh, point p uh, say here where is theta 1 so this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 now if i have to shift point p somewhere somewhere say here or here what will happen as we shift the point p uh, let us do it so suppose if i consider point p say here what will happen to the theta see what is happening to theta 1 it has uh, grown smaller okay and further if i shift point p what will happen to theta 1 it will become still smaller okay so suppose p point is here then where is my theta 1 so look at the theta 1 value now the theta 1 is very small and theta 2 is very large so if p point is shifted to the end one end of the solenoid what will be the theta 1 value theta 1 will be 0 so if theta 1 is 0 and theta 2 sorry if i write theta 2 as theta then this formula can be written as b is equal to mu 0 n i by 2 sin 0 plus sin theta or else you can simply write mu 0 n i by 2 sin theta so when you are talking about magnetic field at one end of the solenoid you have just one angle you don't have theta 1 so theta 1 is 0 and theta 2 can be labeled as theta and then this is what we have and uh, this is the formula of course uh, you can definitely find out sin theta uh, from the geometry of figure sin theta is opposite what is opposite side here l and what is hypotenuse if this is r you can write it as r which later on can be evaluated by pythagoras theorem so it is under root r square plus l square so this is the expression for magnetic field at one or one end of uh, at some point on one of the ends on its axis second uh, what if the point is uh, midpoint say o is midpoint in that case uh, actually we don't need to write theta 1 and theta 2 because both the angles will be same okay and uh, then uh, i can write theta 1 sorry i can write theta 1 is equal to theta 2 as theta and then we have 2 sin theta okay and uh, if you simplify this is what you will get again uh, how sin theta is evaluated the sin theta can always be evaluated from geometry of figure look at the triangle if this is angle opposite side is half of the length this is r so sin theta is l by 2 upon hypotenuse if this is r l by 2 upon r and then r can be evaluated using pythagoras theorem so uh, this is what you will get what if the solenoid is of infinite length now in case of infinite length solenoid uh, what happens is uh, as we earlier had discussed that suppose if the solenoid is having uh, say this much length and uh, now i have point p somewhere here so uh, where is theta 1 this is theta 1 see this is theta 1 this is theta 2 what if 
I consider solenoid of uh, slightly larger length what will happen now so now again if I consider point P and uh, again if I look at the angle values look at theta 1 now look at theta 2 now so theta 1 has obviously grown bigger let us go further still if I take bigger solenoid uh, say having more length what will happen now so again if I consider point P somewhere on the axis and again if I check theta 1 value theta 2 value see theta 1 is very large theta 2 is also very large so if I keep on extending the length of this solenoid and uh, if the solenoid is of infinite length what will happen so in case of infinite solenoid see this is infinite solenoid this is how you can indicate infinite solenoid and uh, then consider point P and now uh, where is theta 1 so now if I take theta 1 it will go somewhere here so I can say angle is 90 degree and uh, that is true with theta 2 also okay so in case of infinite solenoid theta 1 is equal to theta 2 is equal to 90 degree so look at it theta 1 is equal to theta 2 is equal to 90 degree and substitute in our formula substitute uh, in the formula theta 1 is 90 theta 2 is 90 what will happen sin theta sin 90 sin 90 will get you 2 so this is what we have and on simplifying that you will get mu 0 and i so mu 0 and i is the expression for magnetic field of solenoid of infinite length and what if the solenoid is of semi infinite length semi infinite means you have one end but other end is at infinity see here other end is at infinity so in that case theta 2 is 90 and theta 1 is 0 so substitute those values see theta 1 is 0 and theta 2 is 90 so uh, what we get is uh, I think this is mistake you should have 0 here sin 0 and this will be 0 and this is 1 so you will have mu 0 and I by 2 so in case of uh, semi infinite uh, solenoid formula is mu 0 and I by 2 and in case of uh, infinite solenoid formula is mu 0 and I okay so um, uh, that is all about solenoid and its magnetic field I hope you could understand. Thank you.